Hi everyone, this is Odd Apostrophe. Let's continue our game of Seven Days on Steam. There's nothing else I can do anyway. I took out some ginger. Then I filled a pot with water and tossed it inside. <sighs> I wouldn't call it cooking, but I can fix something edible as long as it's quick and easy. The kind of food a man eats when they're left alone one night. Uh, left all alone one night. Don't misunderstand. It's going to be a half-hearted sort of meal at best, is what I meant. <laughs> then uh, get me some miso from the fridge. Chiako opens the fridge. Hmm, it should be on the top shelf. Thanks. I took the miso off her hands, catching a glimpse of a quite, quite significant valley peeking through the white cloth she wore. Uh, we need to get her some proper clothes. No, uh, it's nothing. Uh, I'll have to ask Murasaki later. Mm, I don't have any spices. Is that going to be okay? I took out the boiled ginger and, draining it of water, cut it into pieces. Mm, I make this lost. It's easy. Chiako silently regarded my hands after that. Ugh, stop! I can't take this anymore! Yo, look! Your feverish gaze, your scrutinizing eyes. Stop it, it's making me nervous. I'll cut my hand. <sighs> then do that from farther away. Chaco took a step back. Further than that. She took another step back. Further. Another step. She had backed in, into the front door and could go any further. Well, that looks about right. An appetizing smell filled the room as I tossed the ginger pieces into the frying pan. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Chiako standing on her tiptoes, struggling to see what was going on. I turned the ginger piece over and it started to turn brown. I'd only have to soak them in miso after the other side was fried enough. Jacko kept trying to catch a glimpse of what I was doing. What are you up to? <sighs> I'd only get nervous if you got any closer anyway. Okay, I'm done. Hmm? You don't like it? Did you really want to watch me that badly? Don't complain. Go take your seat. <sighs> Whatever you want. Only half paying attention, I got it Chiako to her seat. Here. I placed the fried ginger and some more rice and miso soup on the table before her. <laughs> yep, it should almost taste like a steak, thanks to the miso. I sat in front of Chaco and pulled the ginger pork from earlier over to myself. And then... I transferred half of the ginger, of the ginger pork to Chaco's plate. Oh, mm, that's an equivalent exchange as far as I can see it. I couldn't serve plain ginger to a guest after all. You seem happy. <laughs> mm, then you should have said so from the start. Uh, 
Yeah, what a selfless person. Help yourself before it gets cold. Let's dig in. To start with, Chiako put a spoonful of the ginger steak into her mouth. How is it? Ginger steak, like I said. Chaco carried a little bit of rice to her mouth. Mm, that's why it's called a man's cooking. It's cheap, easy, and good, and also goes well with rice. Mm, this is how men eat, see? Yako continued to energetically chew on the ginger steak as she spoke. It genuinely lifted my spirits to see her so happy. That's definitely not men's cooking. I wolfed down the rice as I spoke. Chiako said that slowly, as though tasting every word. You sound almost like you're leaving. <sighs> Don't disappear on us, okay? That'll cause us more trouble than anything else. So... Yeah, it'll force us to look until we find you. Besides, Murasaki already feels responsible for these spirits anyway. I told you, you can stay in my house. You shouldn't waste any... You shouldn't waste what time you have left on looking for a place to stay. I'd also appreciate it if you let Murasaki and myself support you where we can. Don't disappear on me, you hear? Good. I figured I'd drill the point into her enough. I never in my life imagined that I'd have dinner with a ghost. I think you'll be able to have those for a while now. Chaco's hand stopped moving as she stared at the table. I regarded her for a few moments, then took a big sip to finish my miso soup. Hmm, I'm done. I collected my dishes and carried them to the sink. Huh, don't leave any leftovers. It may have been a bit plain for her first dinner, but the ghost in question seemed oddly used to that kind of food. <sighs> Satisfied, Chiako stacked her plates up and carried them to the sink. Oh, don't bother. You haven't finished your discussion yet, have you? Your time's precious. You need to take care of that, first and foremost. Chiako balled her hands into fists and returned to the guest room. That sounded almost like something a samurai would say. I considered the two pairs of dishes in the sink. It had been awful of me to make my mom do the dishes of the guests I invited to stay here. No choice. I picked up one of the bowls and began rinsing it with a detergent soaked sponge. How long has it been since I last did the dishes? It must have been at least half a year. 
Yeah! I jumped at the sudden voice out of nowhere. Murasaki? Is that supposed to be a joke? I do that from time to time, I'll have you know. Look, just don't appear without warning. I almost broke that bowl. I couldn't say anything in reply. Wait, how'd you get in? Oh. Right, we made it so she could come over at any time, back when we were kids. It had been a while since she last came over, so I'd totally forgotten all about that. And? Did something happen? I resumed washing the dishes. No, oh, they don't seem to have finished their discussion yet. I couldn't blame her for being curious. You don't need to worry about it. I just had a relaxing dinner with Chako. Rosaki's gaze wandered to the dishes. Hmm? Yeah, I did. It seemed that ghosts get hungry too. Oh, right, I was thinking. It'd be nice if we could get Chako some clothes. Almost. Uh, uh, oh, thanks. Why did she seem so angry? Murasaki knocked on the guest room's door. Chako followed Murasaki's gaze. It traveled to her. Chiako hurriedly covered her chest. I had to look away. Right, you probably need to take a bath too. You haven't had one for a while, have you? She had become so apologetic that she could no longer speak, and just continued bowing over and over. It's no big deal, jeez. I spotted a cat curled up in the corner of the room. Ah, right, I had to go buy you some food. I, I changed her clothes and a bath for Chiako and cat food for Nene. We have a whole bunch of things to do. Murasaki, I'm sorry, but could you prepare the bath? I cleaned the bathtub recently, so it should be okay. And after Chiako's done with her bath... Hand her something to wear. I'll go buy cat food during that time. Don't let her bother you so much. Anyway, I'm off. <laughs> Seeing Chu head off out of the corner of my eye, I then hurried upstairs. <sighs> my wallet. My wallet. I picked up my wallet and smartphone that were lying on the bed and left the room. Well then, hmm? Something brushed against my legs as I was putting my shoes on. Yeah. Ah, the little cougar. 
ネネさんって呼んで<笑>メス猫って呼ばれるのも卑猥だから嫌いじゃないけどそれは大事な時にとっといて、oh, What was she even? Anyway, what's up? デートしよう Bye The cat, or Nene rather, followed me as quickly as I left the house. Ah, you promised not to go outside. <sighs> that part was true. Just don't wander off somewhere on your own. I wouldn't be able to catch her if she suddenly decided to bail. Maybe we should use a leash when you're outside. Or maybe not. Don't make it sound creepy. I had to be careful with my words, or else the ghost would use them against me. That's the lesson I learned from that conversation. Nene stopped after we'd only walked for a few steps. Nene? Uh, yeah, you can see it too. If you say so. Whatever, let's stop fooling around and get a move on. That convenience store there. That's so said Nene, clearly enjoying herself. Ah. Before I could stop her, she began waltzing into the shop. Nene. She turned around as I whispered her name. It'd be bad to have a cat just walk into the store. Yes. That made sense. Luckily, few customers were inside so late at night. I'm taking... I'm making you leave if the clerk says anything. Nene let out a joyful meow and continued into the store. Good grief. I better do this quick and leave. Cat food, cat food. Hmm? I heard Nene's voice come from beyond the shelf and hurriedly circle around it. Nene, don't shout in here. Did you forget you're a cat right now? It'd be weird if someone saw you speaking. It's beyond suspicious. I don't think that's the main issue here. Now that she mentioned it, she'd already meowed a couple times around me, too. Don't speak when there are people around us, okay? Yeah, I can't even shop in peace. Jeez, they sure have a lot of different brands of cat food. I soon realized I was face to face with a whole bunch of cat food packs all over the shelf. You good with this? You'd prefer a meal more fit for a human? Hmm, I almost forgot. A slight mistake here might have been misinterpreted for animal abuse. I thought she only had those things in her head, but apparently she was more thoughtful than her initial impression let on. We can buy a bunch and have you try them all out. I grabbed a few options and tossed them into my shopping basket. I think that should be a n n yeah. Something wet suddenly touched my right cheek. What are you doing? So, that was her licking my... I hope you don't carry any diseases. I added an alcohol disinfectant sheet into the basket, too.
Having finished shopping, we returned on the road we came. I'm glad she's so positive. Come to think of it, after she's finished eating, they'll all probably return to their discussion. If you're talk going well. Yeah, I guess so. So, you've already decided to stay. I've been saying so from the start. But Asaki feels responsible, and you don't have time to look for another place anyway. Don't misunderstand me, I'm just killing time. Sure. We're back. Ah, you need to wipe your feet. Give me a moment. I took my shoes off and headed for the living room. I found Murasaki there, all on her own. Is Jaco taking a bath right now? Mm. I see. I wonder if it's okay to enter the sink area. Got it. I put the bag with the cat food on the table and opened the door leading to the dressing room connected to the bath. If I remember right, we have some clean rags under the sink. Uh... Jaco peeked her head out of the bathroom, but she quickly pulled it back and back in and closed the door as soon as she noticed me. Uh, sorry. Uh, the face soap is the tube thing behind the shampoo. No problem. I moistened the rag, unable to figure out what expression to make. I hadn't seen anything. I hadn't. Okay, let's wipe you off with this. I lay the rag on the floor in front of the door, and Nene jumped on it. After wiping all four of her feet, Nene trotted into the living room. I've actually gotten used to talk to a talking cat. Nene jumped on the table. Which one do you want? I started removing cat food from the bag. Okay. That one... That was one human beings would have enjoyed too. She may have turned to a cat, but it didn't mean her taste for food was the same as... was the same as one's. I placed the plate on the table and opened the bag of fried chicken above it. Tempted by her reaction, I tried sniffing the bag. Well, I don't smell anything. I see. Really? I didn't know that. It seemed like the fried chicken was good enough to make her lose her composure. Murasaki petted Nini's head. This person really doesn't seem to mind being a cat. Okay, okay. Answering her please, I opened another bag of fried chicken. Satisfied, Nene licked her paws. You seem pretty comfortable in that cat form. 
大体何をしたらいいのか感覚でわかるのもともとの猫がいなくなったわけではないからねうん So the cat's default behavior remained in its body despite it obtaining Nene's consciousness. Oh, welcome back. Jacko appeared from the dressing room. No, don't start with that. I got my savings from my part-time job. How is she even planning to earn money as a ghost anyway? <sighs> I caught Nanny in the air before she could land on me. <sighs> you smell like chicken. I threw her away. And yet you can't do anything but the smell about the smell. Oh, sorry for having a bath that's too small for your taste. They sure weren't lacking energy, at least. It's getting late, so I'll get futons for everyone. Uh, nah, you should take it easy today. You're a guest, after all. I moved the table to the corner of the room as I spoke. <laughs> you really don't need to apologize all the time, Chiako. I took out a couple of futons from the closet and laid them on the tatami floor. Anyway, you can continue your discussion. Ah, and my mom is going to be back tomorrow by noon, so everyone besides Jacko should make sure not to speak. <laughs> I was almost I was most worried about you, actually. And that's all. I'm gonna sleep now. Good night. I gave a nod to my currently peculiar guest room and closed the door. Of course. Mm, that help. Tell me everything you can find out. Murasaki waved me goodbye and disappeared past the door. Well then, it was about time I started preparing for sleep. I took a shower and lay down with my back against the bed. I realized something as I sunk into the mattress. I'm so tired. I got attacked by a ghost that later turned into seven girls that now occupied my house. What a day. There's a limit to how many things can happen in such a short time span. After a while, my consciousness drifted into slumber. Morning. I checked my smartphone. 7.52. Ah, I still have school. Even if I started preparing now, I'd probably end up somewhat late. It felt, it felt stupid to go out of my way just for the closing ceremony. Shaking my head filled with thoughts of skipping school, I tried to raise myself out of bed, at, at least. <sighs> I descended down the stairs with a yawn. The door of the guest room opened as I stepped out onto the first floor. Ah, 
Ah, good morning. Right, they're still here. Huh? Your clothes? Hmm, I see. Murasaki thought of everything. You were up early. You could have slept longer. Huh? For me? Jocko regarded me with gentle eyes. Ah, you finished your discussion. Okay, well, let me wash my face and have a glass of barley tea first. Uh, should I call you Murasaki too? Okay, I'll contact her. I'll be back. Jacko bowed her head for the umpteenth time. I scratched the back of my own head and decided to... and headed to the living room. The other girls in Chiaco's room seemed uncharacteristically silent today. I washed my face in the bathroom and took the smartphone out of my pocket. Yeah, morning. Our girls want to report the results of their discussion. Sorry for catching you right before school. That didn't sound like the rule-obsessed Murasaki I knew. Anyway, that's all. I hung up. I finished the remainder of my barley tea. I wonder what kind of verdict the seven girls with a 49-day limit arrived at. I placed the empty glass in the sink and headed for the front door. Uh. Ah. I opened the door to run straight into Murasaki in her school uniform. Morning. Not even him? Mm. Well, it'd be crazy if these kinds of ghosts were even remotely common. Huh? Why? Hmm? Oh. Hmm. Just come in already. Hmm, she hasn't come back yet. Chako appeared in the corridor as Murasaki took off her shoes and entered the house. Murasaki and Chiako headed for the guest room. I followed them. Morning. Though Kokishi was energetic today. Mm, you seem sleepy. Hmm, just what they were just what were they doing in here? Yeah. Chaco cleared her throat and faced and faced me before starting to speak. Yeah, sure. It'd be beyond awful of me to force them out now. Hmm. 
私たちこの49日を7人で使うことにしました。You're gonna change body every, bodies every seven days? そういうこと何のおかげかわからないけどせっかく時間を手に入れたんだから有意義に過ごそうって話したんです。Mm, I think that's the smartest option, too. Mm. What kind? What do, you, what do you mean is that instead of going back to your vessel, after seven days are up, you'll... I had to respect their courage. I doubt that I could ever be so resolute. I couldn't see the faces of the others, but I could tell that, without a doubt, all of them felt the same way. ありがとうございます。私たちは不運な最後を遂げましたが、また今こうして。ここにいます。これはきっと私たちにとって最後をやり直すための時間。そのためには週一さんにも村崎さんにもただご迷惑をおかけすることになると思います。私たちを受け入れる義理もありません。それでも本領だった私たちに。Chaco looks straight at me. I understand. Chaco kept apologizing all throughout yesterday. That's probably just second nature to her. So being so straightforward now stood as a testament to her resolve. I could do nothing but accept her request. I glanced at Murasaki, only to realize she was looking at me. There was a strong sense of determination in her eyes, too. With all the girls so serious, I definitely couldn't treat this as a game, either. That's what being a man is all about, I think. Who'll be first? For a moment, all sound in my house disappeared. You haven't decided that? I couldn't help making I couldn't help making that retort. <laughs>。ずるくない。どうせ私はだらだらして過ごすから。最後でいいんだよ。じゃあ、私最後から2番目。ことはちゃん、本当にそれでいいんですか?え?後ろになるってことは、それだけ待つ時間が増えるってこと。ことはちゃん、せっかちだから待てなさそうに。誰がせっか
当にいいんですかうんこの人形怖いしねわかりましたそしたら紫さんお願いしてもいいですか Murasaki nodded and lifted up the Japanese doll. Chako took a deep breath. July 20th, Sakura, day one. Ooh. Chako's hair suddenly turned pink right after Masaki pushed the doll. Pink da. Are you Sakura? <sighs> Having turned the hue of a cherry blossom, Chako slowly moved her hands and looked over her body. She reminded me of a robot testing its functions after repairs. They went full circle. Hmm? My smartphone let out a notification sound. Hmm, not installed. Huh? This weird thing again. Ah! Chiako? I almost dropped my phone as Chiako suddenly appeared on the screen. I was hallucinating. I knew it. The sudden onset of recent supernatural events had finally driven me mad. End process, end process. I closed all the apps, applications that were running. Chaco disappeared, returning my phone to its ordinary wallpaper. Oh, it came back. Nothing less from a woman that came from a cursed Blu-ray. Are you really Chaco? What the hell is this? What's going on? You're inside my smartphone. She didn't know that? It's a type of modern portable phone. It appears so. But why do you function as an app? Strange to me. Which was mainly your fault. Sakura began looking around. What's wrong? Sakura placed her hand on the bandage as Jaco talked. Sakura pulled the bandage off. Ah, 
Huh? Sakura's eyes were the same color. Your eyes? Alright, why don't we stop it there? Uh, this is Autopostrophe. You've been watching Seven Days on Steam. Oh boy, this is one of these games that's gonna make me cry, isn't it? <laughs> I can already tell. <laughs> but that's part of the fun of doing these uh, visual novels, is that uh, we get to experience that together. So, um, hopefully you'll find it as fulfilling as I will. Or hopefully we both find it fulfilling. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching. I will see you at the next stream.